brand new game, Tile Placement, from Lumberjack Studio, which looks very, very nice. The table has different aesthetics from what we have used so far. Nice art, nice components. It's a new entry into the genre. Let's go and check out how the Isle of Pan plays. <laughs> Let's learn how to play the Isle of Pan. First we start with the setup. Depending on the number of players, we're going to discard some tiles. So if we're playing with two players, we're going to discard all the tiles that have three or four in the center of um, the complex of the hexes. It's a small number, but uh, if you look close, you can identify it. If we're playing with three players, we're going to discard everything that's marked with four. If we play with uh, two, everything that has uh, three or four in the center and if we're playing a four player game we don't discard anything the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to put the starting tile which is this one in the center of the table and every player is going to grab their matching hero and place it in the center of the table on this tile starting from the central hex like that next we're going to shuffle the landscape tiles here open three of those to create a market and the rest is going to sit here as a pile. We're going to have all the critters in the matching slot in the, the nice tray that the game box comes with. Let me show you again how this looks. Very nice. Okay. Then we're going to put the Fantastic Beasts on the side. They're going to emerge later on. The first player token. Each player is going to get their own player board, which is a score track essentially with three tokens, one for each of the type of critters. We have the ones that they grow in the desert, the yellowish tile. You can see that each tile has various uh, landscapes, plains, desert and mountain. We also have uh, lakes, which are impassable. And we have some, uh, some of the terrain types, depending of, uh, regardless if it is a um, plain or desert or whatever, have some cloud, some magical cloud on it, which means it's a portal. You can always go from one of those to another one of those, like this, for example. Okay, so moving forward, what we do is we uh, have one marker, one score marker for each of the different type of critters. The ones that grow in the desert, the ones that grow in uh, the mountains, and the ones that grow uh, in the plains. We have, of course, different names. The green ones are called um, herbivores, Birds of prey are the grey ones and the yellow ones are the, the reptiles. All of these markers are going to start from uh, zero on our player board. This is a spiral player board scoring track which goes all the way up to 25 as you can see. Next we're going to um, put the different Wondrous Lake tiles. Each pair has three of those with uh, their own color in the center and we're going to lock one in the mountains section you see it's a bit of grayish on the side one in the plane again there is a bit of plain art and the last one is a bit of desert and then we're going to uh, put the third one here all of those are the same and have the players color in the center then we're ready to go to start playing the isle of pan first of all we start with the objective of the game each turn you'll need to reveal a bit more on the island and it surprises. What you're trying to do, you're exploring, you're trying to explore the area, discover all these uh, wonderful and very beautiful animals, observe them and gain points depending on, on how many you observe and discover. Along the way you may be able, under the right conditions, to make some fantastic beasts appear and also have the pleasure of checking them out. The play is very simple. The younger player starts by getting um, the player token and play goes clockwise. On your turn, you have to do one of the following. You start, you have to do all the following actually, starting with this specific sequence. So the first thing you need to do is you do all of those steps. You start by drafting, selecting one of the three face up tiles that we have in the market. One, two, three, next to our pile. We're going to select whichever we want, pick it up, and immediately, let's say we select this one, immediately 
fill in the gap with a new one. Okay? For the purposes of this example, let's say we selected this one with, which has all three different terrain types. As you can see, the greenish one is the plains, the gray is the mountain, and the yellowish is the desert. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, for each of those spaces indicated, we're going to pick up one of these critters. So I'm going to take one yellow critter, one gray critter, and one green critter. All of those three and put them in my own personal reserve. Meaning, let's say for example, next to my player board, like that. Then I'm going to position this whichever way I want. I can rotate it, but there is a simple rule. I cannot have it touching only one side. It needs to touch at least three sides. One, two, three, something like that. Okay, this is a legal placement. This is not a legal placement. Touching only one or even two, you have to touch exactly three. So it expands more uh, similarly. The next thing we need to do is we need to move our explorer uh, by choosing zero to three spaces. For example, I can start moving one, two, three, and end up here. I can pass through other explorers. I can also pass um, on different, uh, through different critters that they will be positioned on the board, but I cannot pass through lake tiles. For example, on another turn, I could not do one, two. I can have to go around one, two, three. The next thing you need to, to be aware that there are some, I'm just going to put some of the tiles now so that we make a larger section. of uh, the game board so we can have some more examples to show off some things and how the game works bear with me for a second okay so let's say we have something like that the next thing you need to do after you move your explorer you need to end your movement always on a free space you can pass through other explorers but you cannot move on a different on a space with another explorer so this is forbidden also uh, you can pass through other critters and finish your movement on different um, spaces like that. But you can never pass on top or uh, through lake hexes. A special rule of the magical portal. You can see that some of uh, those tiles have a magical portal. So if you are moving from one of these, one of these to any of those, these are like uh, jump gates, you can consider them adjacent, so one, two, even three, and move like that. You can see that they are facilitating a faster, more flexible movement around the table, and this is very nice, but let's say we moved here. Now, after we finish our movement, we need to choose one of those two options. Now we have the choice of one of the two. We can either observe the local fauna, where we place from one to three tokens of the same kind of the player, uh, of the same kind of critters matching the hex, from our personal player's reserve, on the domain that our explorer is sitting, here we're sitting on a desert, so I can place from my reserve, I cannot take it from the bank, one, two, or three. For the purposes of example, let's say I had two more, and I can place up to three critters of this type, where I ended my movement. It is forbidden to place an animal token on a magical portal, so we cannot place uh, token critters here, animals here, or on legs because of course we cannot even move on those as well. Then for each animal token that we put in play following this procedure we move the respective score marker that many places. I placed three so I'm going to move it one, two, three. If on another turn I move one, two, three and then I had in my personal reserve two of those grey animals, grey critters, I could place from zero up to, from one up to three uh, critters in the location matching this specific uh, terrain. So you can never have, this is a simple rule, uh, for example grey critters sitting on a desert or uh, yellow critters sitting on plain fields and so on, because uh, they only sit on their natural environment. Then, um, what we do, after we finish moving our score track, because this is going to be on different 
slots depending on how many positioning uh, placement we have done during this turn um, we finish the step of our play remember I said we have a choice on step number five we can either observe the fauna and install critters essentially we don't have them we are discovering them so we can identify that they're here because we are explorers observers so we but we take them always from our personal supply we not take them from the bank if we don't have them we cannot place uh, those so we can either observe or discover a wondrous lake if the explorer is adjacent to a lake where there is no wondrous lake tile from a, him or from another player the player puts one of their three wondrous lake tiles into play this tile should be adjacent on three sides like the rest of the tiles and at least on one side on the lake the player has now possession of this wondrous lake so for example if i finished my turn let's say here before i could place one of the wondrous lake tiles that i have next to this area it touches my tile it touches the wondrous lake tile and in total it touches three um, tiles for sure this lake can also uh, grow larger by future placement by placing more tiles and you can have a, a large portion of a lake which belongs to you now because it's touching your own wondrous lake with your own marking here I'm recapping on this step we can either observe the fauna and put from our personal reserve critters animals of this type on this terrain that we're sitting on or discover a wondrous lake now the last step the last step that we need to check in our turn is by our play if we manage to have a fantastic beast appear during its turn when there are three kinds of animal tokens on domains next to a lake where a wondrous lake tile is then a fantastic beast emerges how this happens for example you see i have this wondrous lake here and let's say for the benefit of example we have two yellow critters here maybe we have another yellow here we have three birds green critters here I don't know if the camera catches it let me put it there okay and the last one let's say this was in play as well we have one gray critter here you remember it needs to have all of the three different type of critters adjacent to the wondrous lake expanded wondrous lake so it has critters of gray color yes it has critters of uh, green color yes it has critters of yellow color yes then a fantastic beast appears so how it goes you place a fantastic beast token on the lake so we take one of those these are these nice bluish tokens we place it here on the lake and the player whose wondrous lake is this is the reds player it moves one of their three score tokens forward the cho their choice is their own as many spaces as the occupied domains let's see how this works what we did here is we we have identified the fantastic beast and we're going to move either the gray either the yellow or the green animal token on our score track that many places as the domains of um, uh, that they are surrounding our lake here we have one two three four five so i can pick for example either the yellow or the green and move one two three four five this is it very simple but uh, it doesn't matter if i have three green or two green it needs it matters how many of those hexes around our wondrous lake are populated by uh, different animals one two three four five that's why i pick up one of the three um, score tokens and i move it that many places up on the track if during your turn at least one of your score tokens reaches or passes the space numbered three this has nothing to do with wondrous lake it happened during the rest of uh, the gameplay this is another check that we do then what we do is we pick up one regular animal token 
of our choice from the reserve and we play another turn starting from uh, the beginning but without the drafting section so we don't draft and place one new uh, token but we do all the next subsequent uh, steps very easy so this continues until the game ends player al altering turns doing exactly this following these very simple steps and the game ends when each player has played exactly nine turns and there are only two tiles left face up. This is calculated specifically different on different uh, player counts and it is automatically uh, the case. Then each player adds their points. You add the value of the three score tokens on the score track. So for example, I could have seven plus two, nine plus one. You see, this is one, 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 two, two, three, three, four. So it's not a... Uh, um, always one two three four five in a sequence so you check the number below one plus two three plus seven nine then i add the points from the wondrous lake tiles still on my scoreboard meaning the ones that have not installed in the game you see let's say i had only this one left i have only the one next to the green field you can check that it's next to the green field could be next to the mountain field or next to the desert green or you can have more but let's say i didn't play only this one so i have um, only one out but i'm going to do this i'm going to calculate how many points this awards it awards this number the points that is given uh, has to do with the largest area of this type on the game board so we're going to calculate how many green tiles are adjacent to each other the biggest area this is one 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 on its own uh, here it's one two one two and uh, let's say it's only two so one two so i'm going to get that many points i would get two points but if for example during the play you will not have two playing fields you could have more four or five you would get four or five points for this uh, wondrous leg that you didn't play and still on the side of your scoreboard so uh, we add all those points and when we have the total the player with the most points wins the game very simple gameplay very elegant no many difficult rules very simple steps just uh, to, to, to recap and give you an idea you start by picking one of those three tiles place it to take this different type of critters that are indicated here if they are uh, one two or three one for each Put it on your personal reserve then you play the tile whatever you want following the rules you move your explorer from zero to three spaces and then you choose either to observe the fauna and put back on the space some of the critters from your reserve if you have any or discover a wondrous lake then you check if a fantastic beast appears and you move with the scoring if you check if you pass the three marker here you get to get to have another turn for each of those three score tokens. Very simple, very fast, very nice aesthetics. This is the Isle of Pan. So there you have it. This is the Isle of Pan, a very simple tile laying game for two to four players, which has different aesthetics from what we have used so far on the game board, on the table. So the tiles look very nice, plays very, very fast. The rules are extremely simple. I think you can teach it to anyone. Hope you enjoyed this video. This is how the Isle of Pan plays.